everyone, it's Alice and I'm just here to do a September wrap up. Uh, I've got 17 books to talk about today. Uh, it was a pretty big reading month, uh, most of them not not the best, so I'm going to kind of try and keep those ones brief. But um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Uh, so the first book I finished this month was The Assassin Game by Kirsty McKay. Um, I started that one last month. Uh, you can just hear my baby in the background there. She is a bit happy. She's going up and down stairs. Why, why wouldn't she be? Um, but anyway, the assassin game, it's like there's this game called Killer and one person is the killer and the rest of the participants have to try not to be killed and Kate is playing the game, she's not the killer but someone seems to actually be trying to kill her rather than just playing a game. Uh, it's it's a bit like Stags by M.A. Bennett in that it's meant to be like the really popular elite people pick the lesser people to play with and they're meant to be really grateful for it but then Kate's parents own the island that the school is on so I don't really know how she can be classed as an outsider uh, so it's meant to be set on an island just outside of Wales uh, I don't know if the author has ever been to Wales because I've been there quite a bit and it doesn't feel anything like this so the atmosphere was really lacking but it, it's an interesting concept it's just not really that thrilling because I managed to guess who the killer was quite early on. I gave the assassin game three stars out of five. The second book that I finished in September was Outwalkers by Fiona Shaw. Um, I was meant to read this way back at the start of the year because it was on the YA book prize and I always read all of the shortlisted books but it's very chunky uh, I don't know if that's got something to do with the fact that Fiona Shaw normally writes for adults. This is her first YA book. Um, it very much feels like it, she's writing down to you. Like the character is meant to be either 14 or 15 but they don't feel that age. Um, the world is very interesting. It's meant to be like a futuristic Britain and there's lots of talk about how there's like the the red and blue party. So it's meant to be like Brexit's happened and everything's disastrous and now there's a barrier between England and Scotland and everybody in England is monitored and it's really hard to get healthcare and things like that. Which is like a tiny bit scary because god knows how it's actually going to play out and it'll be very interesting to see how this book is received in a few years time when we know how it's all going to have played out because it could just instantly make itself irrelevant it could very much be a zeitgeist and I feel like it's a very brave move to write a book like this but I'm glad it didn't win the book prize because I just don't think it's written very well so instead of doing speech in speech marks um, it's all indicated by hyphens starting the sentences, um, not even always starting the sentences. There'll be a hyphen and then a little bit of dialogue and then he says and then a little hyphen to continue the dialogue. It's not always on new lines. Uh, that doesn't always work well because Fiona Shaw seems to be an author who likes to use hyphens in her writing anyway. So sometimes descriptive sections will seem like their dialogue. So it throws you out of the story very easily. It's hard to get absorbed in it and when it's like over 400 pages that's not something that you really want to do especially if you are aiming to write for a younger audience. Uh, you also find that there's like a lot of errors throughout it where hyphens are missing but it is speech and I know that's just really small finicky stuff but it really affected my enjoyment of the story and I can imagine that if I was younger I would have read the first couple of chapters and I would have abandoned it straight away. I think the only reason that I actually persevered is because I was so determined to read every book on the shortlist, but definitely glad it didn't win and I gave Outwalkers two stars. The third book that I finished in September was My Not So Perfect Life by Sophie Kinsella. Um, my partner actually picked this book out for us because um, we read together and we have like a big wall over there, like I mean we have a big wall here, but we have a big wall of books over the opposite side of the room that are books that we're hoping to read and then donate. Uh, they only get to stay in our house if they are good enough and My Not So Perfect Life is definitely good enough. Um, I read Sophie Kinsella's young adult novel a few years ago, um, Finding Audrey, and I absolutely hated it and I thought I was going to hate My Not So Perfect Life too, but it's it's really, really funny. I, I can see why so many people say that she's like the pinnacle of like chick lit or like contemporaries because um, 
it's just really sweet like there's a girl called Katie and she's got like this job where she tries to be really cool and she's like no I want to be known as Kat and she never really fits in and then she gets fired and she has to move all the way back home and really kind of rediscover herself but then her old boss ends up going and staying because she helps her dad set up a glamping business and her old boss ends up going and staying at the glamping site and it's like oh no how is she going to cope with the fact that she's confronting the person who fired her when her dad doesn't even know that she's been fired he thinks she's taken a sabbatical and it's just really really funny like there are times when I was laughing out loud reading this and I was reading it out loud so like I was having to stop to put the book down to have a laugh to then carry on reading and laughing and I don't often find that but yeah we gave My Not So Perfect Life five stars I think um, and we're already reading another Sophie Kinsella book, so that is a recommendation in itself. Like, she's, yeah, if you've read Finding Audrey and you didn't like it, give her another chance, because I wasn't going to, and now I'm really glad that I did. So, the fourth book that I finished in September was Beyond the Odyssey by Maz Evans. Uh, Beyond the Odyssey is the third book in the Who Let the Gods Out series. Um, I've also finished the fourth book in the series, Against All Gods, because we just read them back to back. They, the pacing of these two books, both of them got five stars from us because the pacing was just incredible. Um, you get about halfway through book three and it's like a little bit slow, but then everything kicks off all at once and it's just impossible to put it down. Like we read the last book in one sitting and it's like 300 pages. And it is a middle grade series, so it's a little bit younger than we normally read. But um, because there's such a huge cast of characters, like all of the gods are there and there's like a lot of different demons as well. So it's a big cast of characters. It's a lot to try and keep on top of. It's not the kind of book I would normally be able to read that quickly. But Maz Evans writing is just such a pleasure. Like you can't help but devour it in just one go. But yeah, Maz Evans writing is just a pleasure. You can't help but just devour it in one sitting. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing what she does next because I only decided to read the Who Let the Gods Out series because of the recommendation of Steph on Twitter. Um, she really, really rates this series highly. And I'm so glad that I took a chance on it because it has just been a riot from start to finish. Um, I'm planning on writing a full review of all four books at some point uh, because there's a lot of themes that are kind of linked throughout that make it just superb. But I don't have time to really deconstruct them right now. Um, but yeah, five stars to Beyond the Odyssey and Against All Gods. The next book that I finished in September was How I Found You by Gabriella Lepore and if I had to think of one sentence to sum this book up it would be a shit twilight but with witches. I honestly don't understand why this book has such good reviews. Um, the main character is basically Bella. She gets shipped off to her aunt's house and she's very whiny and she's just all down all the time. And then, because it's a dual perspective, there isn't even any of the dramatic tension of like, ooh, what's wrong with that boy? Like, why is he so different? It's just straight away you jump over to his perspective and he's like, I'm a witch. Like, okay, well you've just taken any interest I had and just wiped it out completely. Um, I was reading this book every night because I was reading like two pages and then falling asleep. So if you do have problems getting to sleep, pick this book up, it will just knock you out. I'm not even joking. Um, I ended up giving it two stars, which I think was actually higher than I thought it should have had. Like, I thought that was really quite generous. Um, there's a big bad, and it's just dealt with like that. There's not really any kind of tension at all, and it just feels very predictable. Like, you know exactly what's going to happen next. Like, oh, friends to enemies. No, enemies to lovers, and yeah, big bad, just poof. Oh, no, we're fine. Uh, the epilogue at the end is just so frustrating because it's like there's still like a little bit of tension at the end and then she takes the epilogue and just completely wraps up every single string in the neatest bow and I hate books that have really really neat endings because I just feel like it's nice to have some kind of world left open so you're left guessing a little bit when you're just giving the readers all of the very very neat answers I just think that's really lazy. So yeah, two stars for How I Found You. The next book I finished in September was The Air by Kira Cass. Uh, I also gave this one quite a generous rating, so I ended up giving it two stars. So the existence of The Air in itself 
is a massive spoiler for how the selection trilogy finishes because the protagonist in the air is the daughter of the winner of the selection. Um, Edelyn, the, the new protagonist, is undergoing her own selection and she doesn't want to. And then she does. And then she really, really doesn't. And then she really, really does. And it just doesn't make any sense. Um, the character is just so terribly developed. Uh, it's only like 300 pages at the very most. And I just feel like having that many personality shifts in one tiny book just makes it seem like Kara Cass knew that she wanted to continue America and Maxon's story but didn't know how to do it without contriving a daughter for them. Um, the world building that she managed to get so spot on in the last book of the trilogy is just completely demolished. Uh, whereas the, the original trilogy manages to focus half on the selection and half on the greater conflicts going on in the world. This book is just solely focused on the selection. Like, it's wrapped up in the guise of caring about the greater world because the reason that Edelin agrees to the selection is to distract the people from their unrest. But it, it just doesn't feel genuine at all. Uh, I'm going to read The Crown because, again, it's really, really short and it's the last book in the series, so I might as well just knock that one out of the park. But it's really becoming unenjoyable and I gave the air two stars. In happier news I actually gave Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab five stars. Uh, so this is the second book in the Cassidy Blake series. Uh, it's a middle grade so it's a bit younger than Victoria Schwab normally writes. She normally writes a young adult aimed to adult um, but this is superb. Uh, so we follow a girl called Cassidy who has a near-death experience and it means that she is able to cross through the veil and she can get to the other side and she can help spirits pass on. And so we follow Cassidy and her best friend Jacob, who is a ghost, on wacky, spooky adventures. And this book is in Paris, as you can see by the gorgeous cover. Um, so we get to explore the catacombs, we get to go all around like Notre Dame, hearing ghost stories about France. And um, France is one of the countries that I've always wanted to visit, particularly Paris. Um, so this was right up my alley, uh, especially considering it's Halloween at the end of the month. Like I would highly recommend picking these up sooner rather than later. Uh, unfortunately, it's only been out for two weeks and I already can't wait to read the third book. So I don't even know what I'm supposed to do with myself for the next year of my life. But I think I'm probably just going to end up rereading this one and rereading City of Ghosts, the first book. The next book I finished in September was A History of Gutter and Blood by Hannah Moskowitz. Uh, I really don't have anything to say about this one. I gave it one star and that, again, a very generous rating. Um, it's meant to be narrated by one of the characters, but it has like weird little editorial notes through it where we're meant to think that they're leaving themselves notes to edit the manuscript up afterwards. And it, it really doesn't work. The next book I finished in September was Are We All Loving Some Snowflakes by Holly Bourne. So this was Holly Bourne's 2018 release and I actually bought it the day it came out so I don't know why I waited a year to actually read it. But um, if you've read any Holly Bourne before this is very much more of the same. Like she focuses on teens and teen mental health and um, in this book we follow a character called Olive who has a breakdown and gets sent to a place called Camp Reset. Um, it's a new camp where they aim to use kind of alternative methods to deal with teen mental health and to give people the skills that they need to look after their own mental health. Um, but Olive thinks that she can make a plan for herself that will be even more effective. And I think this book is written very cleverly because um, Olive decides that she doesn't want to be diagnosed. Like she has a diagnosis, she just doesn't want to know what it is. Um, and so at the beginning of the book, you have Olive thinking she's pretty much okay. And that's that's the baby making noises again. Sorry about that. Um, so at the beginning of the book, Olive thinks she's pretty much okay. And it's very neatly written. But then towards the end, when Olive's mental state starts getting worse, um, you notice that there's a lot more 
long sentences, all the ideas kind of run into each other, her thoughts jump from place to place, and it really puts you in the mindset of how somebody would feel, because she thinks everything through, and in her mind it's very logical, and you can totally see where she's coming from, the way that she thinks it's logical, but it's not, and it's it's just it's a really superb way of writing because it really does throw you into the character um we did end up giving this one four stars rather than five because it wasn't quite as good as am i normal yet and that was like the pinnacle for me but um i i did really enjoy this one and i'll probably end up rereading it sooner rather than later because i'm sure that there will have been things that i missed because i did read it very very quickly because of the rapid pace throughout the next book I finished in September was Mer Charmer by Amy Bias, which is the second book in the World of Illuvia series. Uh, it's a middle grade series. Uh, they were published by Curiosity Quills, but I've got a feeling that they've been republished since then. Uh, I actually started reading this book two years ago. I just couldn't get into it, and I decided to force my way through it last month. I'm not sure why, but it wasn't as enjoyable as Fairy Keeper, because I think Fairy Keeper really established the way that the magic in Illuvia works. Whereas Mer Charmer just relaxes it a lot more. Like, it's all very accepted. It's just Phoebe finds a dead body and she decides to team up with the Mers to help solve the mystery. Um, there are bits that are much scarier than I would have imagined a middle grade could be. But then the same can be said about Tunnel of Bones. Like, I genuinely felt like I was going to have a heart attack at one point when I was reading that because it was so legitimately frightening. Don't get me wrong, I did enjoy it. I did end up giving my charm a four stars, but there's just not really much more that I can say about it than it was kind of like a cute, sweet writing style. The next book I finished in September was Molly's Game by Molly Bloom. Uh, this is an autobiography from a girl called Molly, surprisingly, about the poker game that she ran. Um, it's just very much just that. She runs a poker game. Someone takes over the poker game from her. She moves to another place and does another one and then eventually the police get involved because they don't really like poker games um strangely enough like it does feel a lot like the great gatsby the way that she describes a lot of the locations a lot of the buildings a lot of the people um it's particularly strange because leonardo dicaprio and toby Maguire are both characters in this book um i hated toby Maguire before i hate him even more now so she got that right she really does turn us against him not like i needed any encouragement uh, it's just very bland at points. Like, the beginning is just, I am Molly and my brothers are much more successful than me and that makes me sad, so I'm going to make a load of money and then still feel as though I'm not as good as my brothers. Yeah, that's riveting stuff. Uh, it, it gets better, but it's just like, the font is so tiny. I don't know if you can see how tiny the font is, but like, why does anybody need to write a book this thin with font that small? Like, just make your book slightly fatter. It'll be much more comfortable for people to read. So, I mean, I was gonna take a star off for that anyway, but I did end up giving this three stars. Um, there was a point when I thought it might have been a four, but then all of the kind of stuff that's foreshadowed in the prologue is wrapped up in the epilogue that isn't actually part of the story and i feel like the ending is just so rushed that it doesn't make any sense and surely the bit where she's actually getting into legal trouble and the police are at her door like knocking down like that should be a little bit more focused on because that seems like the more dramatic element but who knows i'm not a writer and i don't run poker games so what do i know the next book that we read in September was Not Working by Lisa Owens. We do have a copy somewhere in our house, but it was just so unnotable that I couldn't even bother to find it. Um, on the front cover, it's like, funny, hilarious, comedic genius. Yeah, it wasn't. Sophie Kinsella, funny. This one, not at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. I gave it one star. And I mean, if it hadn't been such a quick read, I would have probably thrown it out of the window. That, that's true I would have I would have <laughs> the next book I finished in September was The Corridor by I want to say A.N. Willis but I've already forgotten I'm just gonna check it won't let me unlock oh why would this happen yeah A.N. Willis so it's the first book in a duology a girl lives in a futuristic yeah, UK 
England? I don't know where it is. Um, a girl lives in a futuristic version of our Earth where there is a corridor that links our Earth with a second Earth. Um, hence the corridor. Uh, but then, like, something wacky happens and she suddenly gains powers and she can open portals herself and she can go to all these other Earths that no one knew existed apart from she goes to the third earth and there's no one there and it's really dead and then she eventually finds her way over to a fourth earth where they know that there are 12 other earths so that that's that's helpful it's good that she ended up going to that one or i don't know where we would have ended up because there would have been no story uh so her dad is a scientist who has been overthrown because they blamed him for a kind of power surge happening with this corridor but really i think it's just a bad idea to do like if, if a big corridor just appears out of nowhere why are you going to walk through that like just don't just stay where you are like that is dangerous don't risk it and if you can suddenly do portals with your hands like maybe just don't i don't know i, I think that would just solve a lot more of her problems like she has a lot of difficulties going on because like the the lady who took over from her dad is like evil i don't know it's, i enjoyed the corridor so much that i won't even bother reading the second book in the duology even though it's like less than 200 pages so that that pretty much sums that up i did end up giving it two stars uh i'm now thinking i should probably drop that down to one because it was just so bland everything was just one dimensional there was no tension at all it was like oh I'm walking down the street. I'm walking in a new world. Oh, I'm being attacked by a bear. Yay. Like, there were no levels. There was no tension. It didn't interest me at all. And the only reason I carried on was because it was so short. And I really am now realising that I need to stop reading books just because they're short. That would save me a lot of complaining in this video. The next book that I finished in September was The Beautiful by Rene Adier. Uh, I could not rate this book more highly i've given it five stars and i am already eagerly waiting for the next one even though this one isn't actually out yet because i read my copy through netgalley um so it's being marketed as like the resurgence of vampires in ya but i think the way that she's done it is it's it's quite clearly a mystery story that has vampires in it and there's a big twist at the end which i didn't see coming and that takes a lot to pull the wool over my eyes so you'll see that like basically every time i complain about a book it's because it's predictable and this was so not predictable which i loved uh celine the main character is really interesting like she has fled from france to new orleans because she killed the man who tried to rape her which means she has like all kind of issues going on like she's dealing with the fact that she's a murderess she's dealing with the fact that she's had to abandon her family she's living in a new place trying to get used to the idea of being in new orleans so it's not just a vampire story so anybody who's turned off by the fact that it's being marketed as vampires like it is so much more than that and it actually makes me a little sad that the vampire thing is what everybody's been so focused on because it's such a minuscule aspect like, it really doesn't feel like a vampire story. Like, yes, there are vampires in it, but they aren't actually overtly tackled until right near the end. Like, you, you know that it's a vampire because everybody's been talking about that. But if you didn't already know, you would be intrigued and you would be wondering what these creatures are. And for her to be able to revitalise something that was so overdone just, like, six years ago, like, bow down. Like, I am, I am more than on board with this. The next book that I finished in September was What Magic Is This by Holly Bourne. Uh, this is Holly's first collaboration with Barrington Stoke, and I decided to read this because I managed to find a copy in the library and it's only been out for a couple of weeks. But I also went to see her talk at Bath Children's Literature Festival at the weekend. Um, and I was just in a holly born mood like we read Lemmings and I thought why not read her other new book um, it's just so cute like again I gave this one four stars because it wasn't quite what I wanted but it's very much all about self-love and friendship and making sure that you put yourself first above absolutely everyone and I think that's a really inspiring lesson to teach to young people and it's something that isn't often dealt with in younger books so because this is written aimed at a audience who are less confident readers 
um, often dyslexic readers, um, it's important that they also have the chance to read books that have morals like this. And I think teaming up with Holly Bourne was an absolutely brilliant idea from Barrington Stoke. So the last book that I finished in September, I actually finished in the early hours of this morning, and it's October 1st, so I mean, technically this one is a lie, but I did start reading it like seven years ago. So we can count it. Uh, it was The Moth Diaries by Rachel Klein. Um, I had it on my Kindle and it was the first book I ever tried to read on my Kindle and I struggled through and struggled through and managed to get to 10%. So the fact that I've now managed to read it, I'm quite proud of. It's just really terrible. So um, we follow a girl who is writing diaries. Yeah, people die and I didn't think a book that had this much death could be this boring. Like, honestly, I wanted to put it down, but I was just so determined to finally finish it because it's been sat on my currently reading on Goodreads for the longest amount of time. That's my daughter making happy noises while she's clipping in her, her high chair, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's been sat on my currently reading for so long and I just felt like I just wanted to get it finished and get it out of the way and I'm glad that I have, but it really hasn't added anything to my life and like you can't tell when it's supposed to be set and all the characters are basically carbon copies of each other, but basically every review on Goodreads is giving it five stars and I just don't know if I missed something or if it was just too highbrow for me because it had lots of quotes from uh, philosophers throughout that just threw me because I wasn't expecting that but it really wasn't what I was expecting and for people saying it's like scary and like vampires I no, I didn't get any of that not at all I gave the moth diaries two stars that was very generous so that's it for this September wrap up so that was 17 books in total the worst book being A History of Bitter and Blood by Hannah Moskowitz and the best book being a toss up between Ten of Bones by Victoria Schwab and The Beautiful by Renée Adier as you can tell I'm already getting in quite a spooky mood so we're going to be doing an October TBR over the next couple of days and that's probably going to be just chock-a-block full of spooky stuff. Halloween is my favourite holiday and I think it's so much better than Christmas and I'm just looking forward to getting my spook on. So thanks for watching this review video. I hope that I didn't offend you too much if you loved any of these books. Uh, sorry, they, they, a lot of them were really, really poo. I'll see you next time. Bye.